Hello, everyone. Today I want to start with one important story that happened to me a few days ago. So almost a week back, I was a part of an all-women panel discussion in one of the most, uh, one of the biggest literature festivals in our country. And among the course of our discussion, we were asked to share about one of the most emotional moments of our lives. Uh, being a public discussion, it was obviously not meant to be a personal experience. We were expected to bring light to a much broader perspective from one of our own personal experiences. And um, I could not think of anything else more relative than the safety of women in our country. I went on to see that women in Nepal weren't safe anywhere neither in public buses, nor at schools, uh, not in their own neighborhood, not even at their own homes. I went on to say that sexual harassment was so common that it would happen by strangers, by your friends, by your neighbors, by your relatives, by your own family members. A few days later, I saw a quite misleading headline in one of the bigger news portals of our country. Um, it was misleading in a sense that it made it, it presented it as my coming out story with a picture that was used of me inside a chaupadi shelter, me looking quite frail and miserable. Of course, that's a very different topic of unethical journalism, which I'd love to talk about in some other panel someday. But today I want to focus on this one very important topic, that is rape culture. If you allow me, I would love to read out a few comments that were made in that particular Facebook post and some other news, news portals that copied the same news and posted it in their own pages. So the comments read, the, by the way, the headline said, um, and the comments that read were, Sun ko Nepal just to this ma ji bhayo thikai bhayo. Babal bhayo tani. I want to find out if he actually penetrated you or did he just touch you. Aile sama kati zana le tapai lai chhoye kosa. So Miss Nepal's virginity is already lost. Chinta nali nu Miss, at least you did not die. Tapai mor nu ta bhayo nani. Ramji chow kina nong nu ta. This is among the few this is among the few of the hundreds of comments that I went through and uh, this really pushed me out of this one bubble that I had been living in. This bubble that I thought where people had been progressive, where I thought that women were finally rising up and this bubble where I thought that women were finally started to get respect and love that they deserve. It was like pushing me out of that bubble into this fast, deep reality, and I was disgusted, to say the least. I did not stop there. I went on to research the profile of every individual that passed a comment at me. I saw a young man who had just gotten married and who could not be happier to flaunt a picture of him with his wife. I saw a picture of a mother with two kids. I saw a picture of an elderly man who was almost the age of my father, and he was the one who said, Ji bhai, tike bhai, whatever happened, it's normal, it happened for good. I found a profile of a man who just had, who, ha who could not be more proud to flaunt his uh, one year old daughter's achievements. I was shook to see that these people were as human as me. They were not just some comments in social media, it was the actual society, the society that you and I, we all were living in. This one particular comment caught my attention. It was from a woman who had two kids, two daughters to be precise. She wrote, if you sell yourself for 100 bucks for fashion and modeling, what else do you expect out of it? Think about Nirmala. I went through the profile of this woman, and she is the one who had been teaching defense classes to girls to protect them against sexual predators. To the viewers and listeners who do not know, Nirmala was a 13-year-old girl who was brutally raped and murdered in July 2018 
which brought a very big public outreach against the situation of women's safety in our country, which took the world, took the Nepali media, the national newspapers by storm, the perpetrators still at large, and the case is still wide open. And this case was very important to showcase the reality of women in our country. But one thing that I understood that, that really hit me from all the comments that I went through was, we as a society were expecting to get rid of rape by normalizing sexual harassment and expecting change. I could, I could not be more disgusted. I could not be more shameful at the level of mentality that we were all going through. I wanted to research more. So I went through and I studied a lot about what made people think that way, what made people think that sexual harassment was normal. And I stumbled upon rape culture. I did quite a research and I found out that rape culture was so deeply embedded in our society that we all had been practicing it knowingly or unknowingly. We had all been practicing it. We had all been victim of it. We just did not know that we had been normalizing it so much that it had become our day-to-day -day activity. Think about it. How many times have you listened to a song where a singer says, that he wants to make a woman his possession. How many times have we looked down upon a woman saying she is too opinionated or too egoist? How many times have we took permission from our own husbands or boyfriends to go out with our girls? From sexualized advertising to molestation, from unsexual, unconsensual touch to rape, from drugging to marital rape, all of these come under the same category, which makes us, which gives us an idea that women are submissive, and this idea that you all can objectify women. If you allow me, I would like to show you a chart. Um, please, if you mind. Yes, um, this is the chart of rape culture, which is divided into four, uh, three categories, which is normalization, degradation, and assault. In level one, that's normalization. There are things like boys will be boys, sexist attitudes, unwanted touch that is non-sexual, non catcalling, eve teasing, whistling, unequal pay, online rape and death threats, victim seeming, which goes on and which is followed by level two of rape culture which is flashing or exposing, safe word violations, revenge porn, groping, threatening. Moving on to the actual bigger issue, that is rape, murder, gang rape, molestation, dozing, murder. After going through this particular pyramid, how many of you can relate yourself to the chart? Please raise your hands up. Quite a few hands have raised. The rest. Um, how many of you can um, relate to normalization? How many of you can relate to degradation? How many of you can relate to assault? The story that I shared at Literature Festival was, was of me when I was four years old, when I was molested by a much older man. I was too young to realize what was happening to me, but much later, the image came back to me, and I was haunted with that image for the rest of my life. Since then, I've been a victim of catcalling, of unwanted touch, of sexist attitudes, of victim shaming, of threatening, of groping, and I know that I am not alone. I know that I'm not the only woman standing here right now and saying that I have related to this pyramid because I know a lot of hands were raised and I have talked to a lot of women, I've talked to a lot of young girls and I wish I could go back in time and tell them. You could have said no 
whenever you felt uncomfortable. And I want to tell you all, I want to tell the girls who think that, who blame themselves that it was never your fault. It was never your fault. Standing here today, I want you all to look at the pyramid once more. And if you can see yourself in there, stop. Stand right there and reevaluate. Reevaluate the way that you've been viewing women and rape culture as a whole. And if you can still find yourself in that culture, please do something to change it. Do something from your own to make sure that it does not happen again. Raise conversations about it these conversations that rape is not an isolated subject. It has a lot of other topics, a lot of other environment and cultural aspects that has groomed people to think that sexual harassment is normal, but rape is not. But this is not an isolated subject. I know that rape is a very sensitive issue. And I know that I or anyone could never really understand what a victim of rape has gone through. But we can empathize. As human beings, we can empathize with our own experiences. You can empathize with your experience of being groped at a public bus. You can empathize with your experience of your teacher touching you at places you did not want to be touched at. You can empathize with how you felt when your boyfriend forced you for sex. You can empathize when you were victim shamed, when you saw someone being victim shamed. That's the least we can do. We can empathize with our own experiences and take actions against it. Rape is a bigger picture. It's a much bigger picture of the same ideology that makes us think that women are not as equal as men, the same ideology that makes us think that marital rape is not real. The same ideology that thinks that victim shaming is normal, but it is not. It has never been like, it has never been that way. And from this conversation, I want all of us to sit back, reevaluate how we've been culturally viewing women and rape culture as a whole. And I want us all to take a stand against it. Thank you so much.